Hello, Year 3, and thank you for joining for the next science lesson. Um, let's start off with our recap questions as usual. Remember, these questions recap to um, learning we've already done in science this year. First one, can you list three electrical sources of light? It can be any three electrical sources of light. So sources of light that must run off electricity. True or false, all living things turn to fossils. And which nappy is the most absorbent? You all might have a slightly different answer for that. And you might not have even used a nappy in the last lesson. You might have used a paper towel or a tea towel. Um, so you can change that question if you need to. As always, pause the video there, have a go at those questions and we'll come back together in a moment's time. So let's look at those um, questions again. So list three sources of electrical, three electrical sources of light. Um, I went for lamp. So um, I've actually got a lamp in my corner over here. We could have a torch and you could even have a television. You might not think a television is a source of light, but actually there's light coming from the television. If you ever put a television on in the room that's dark, you'll see that actually it does produce quite a lot of light. Um, next one, true or false, all living things turn to fossils. And actually this one is false. It takes a specific set of circumstances for animals or living things to turn to fossils. And this is what's got to happen. The animal has to be buried by sediment and soft parts decay. More sediment builds up and com is compressed to form rock. So the rock is formed around the outside of um, the animal or the skeleton or whatever might be left. Um, minerals in the groundwater replace the bone forming a fossil. So eventually the skeleton decays and minerals in the groundwater replace it. And the rock rises to the surface and is worn away by erosion. So obviously not everything that dies undergoes that same process. Only a very small um, minority of living things do. Last one, which nappy or object that you might have used was most absorbent? I can't answer that one for you. You might all have slightly different answers. So it depends on what you use, but I'll be interested to know your answer nonetheless. As we know, each science lesson, we focus on one of our scientific skills. Today, we're going to focus, uh, we're going to focus on choosing how to record information. But before we get onto that, I've got to start a question for you to think about. If you could design your own nappy, what material would you use? What material can you think of that's really absorbent that would absorb lots of liquid? Hmm. Now, I'm thinking, obviously, I don't have absorbent crystals lying around my house. So anything I have around my house, I've got like sponges. I know they're really absorbent. I've got fabrics. They're quite absorbent. So I'd be thinking something along those lines because that would absorb and soak up lots and lots of liquid. What would you have gone for? Now, as I said, we're going to continue looking at our last lesson, which is when we tested which nappy was most absorbent. And we're going to look at how to present our results. Now I've made up some results. Let's imagine these are our results. And if you didn't do the investigation, you can use these so you can still access this lesson. Nappy A absorbed 65 milliliters. Nappy B absorbed 30 milliliters. Nappy C absorbed 70 milliliters. And Nappy D absorbed 35 milliliters. How could we show these results? How can I show my answers and my um, findings to other people? Have a little think, what ways can we show it? So the ways that I can think of that we could show our learning are a table, which is similar to how it's shown here, but we've just formalized it into a table. So I've got the nappy down the side, the amount of water absorbed here, nappy A absorbed 65, nappy B absorbed 50 milliliters, nappy C absorbed 70 milliliters, and nappy D absorbed 35 milliliters. I could do it as a pictogram. Now, obviously this pictogram is a little bit different to what ours would look like, but you can draw pictures to show especially if you use cups of water to show how much um, each nappy absorbs, you could draw, right, nappy one, three cups, nappy two, five cups, nappy um, three, seven cups, or whatever it could be. And last one is a graph. And this is a um, bar chart in particular. And I've got the different nappies at the bottom and the amount of water they absorbed up the sides. And you can see, well, nappy three must have absorbed the most water, that's 600. Nappy two absorbed the least, you wouldn't really want to go and buy that one. Um, we're going to focus on drawing that bar chart this time. 
And I'm gonna take you through a step-by-step -step approach so you can do it alongside me. And this is gonna be our challenge for this lesson. So step one is draw the axes. You have your Y axis going up your page and your X axis going across the page. And you want most of your space to be this area, which is why they do cross over, but only just at the edge. So that's step one, draw the axis. If you need a bit more time, pause the video there. Step two, label the axes. So I've labeled my Y axis with amount of water absorbed, because I'm gonna have the numbers up the side showing the amount of water absorbed. Along the bottom, I've just labeled it nappies because they're gonna be where all the bars are for the different types of nappies. Again, if you need some extra time to catch up um, with your bar chart, um, pause the video there and catch up. Step three, add increments to the axes. So as you can see up the side, I've added some numbers. I've done zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So I've gone up in tens. And at the bottom, I've just got nappy A, nappy B, nappy C, nappy D, for the four different nappies that I used um, for mine. Again, if you need some more time, pause the video there and you can catch up with us. Last step is to draw the bars. So I've said that nappy A absorbed 30 milliliters, nappy B absorbed 50 milliliters. Obviously, if you did this last lesson, you might have very different results to mine. Uh, and your graph, your increments might even be different. You might have had zero cups, one cup, two cup, three cup, four cups, five cups, if you use cups instead of milliliters. Um, and you can see how my bar chart is beginning to take shape. Um, that is the end stage. Obviously, you'll need two more bars, for nappy C and nappy D. I don't want to do it all for you. Perhaps you can have a go at those ones yourself. Now, once you've recorded your results, I've got three questions that I want you to answer. Which nappy absorbed the least and the most urine? So if you did a bar chart, you'd be needing to look for the which one's got the smallest bar and which one's got the biggest bar. That's why they're useful, because you can quickly see which one's got the highest or the lowest. Which nappy, oh, in fact, that's the same one, which nappy absorbed the least urine? You don't need to worry about that question because it's the same as above. And, and why do you think this is? Why do you think nappy A absorbed 30 and nappy B absorbed 50. Why did they absorb more? I think, and that one you're gonna to have to be slightly creative for. Now I'm thinking, right, I am I know that nappies have absorbent crystals at the bottom. So maybe nappy B has more absorbent crystals than nappy A, and that's why it absorbs more liquid. So that might be the reason for me. You might have a slightly different reason. Maybe it's because they use different materials. Maybe it's because they're different shapes. What do you think? Can you explain your answer? Um, I'm not gonna go through the possible answers for that because as um, with before, you're all gonna have slightly different um, bar charts. You're all gonna have slightly different answers and you might have something slightly different. Question three, why do you think this is? So please send in your learning, please send in those answers to the questions so we can have a look at them and see what you have found with yours. Once again, thanks for joining us with this science lesson year three and I can't wait to see some of your wonderful learning. See you next time.